Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the official party and remain standing for the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, 8th Air Force, Major General Thomas Bouchier. No, don't stop. Is this thing on? Can you hear me? You turn the mic on? Operator error. How's that? Is that better? I know General Heron's like, you probably don't want to hear me, do you? No. I was toying with uh, whether or not I was going to ask General Heron's to be the guest speaker at the change of command, but I decided not to. So, uh, Colonel Ely, you can put your formation at ease if you'd like.
Test. There we go. Bingo. All right. Honorable Gorman, civic leaders, mayor, distinguished guests, General Danner, General Heronsack, commanders, uh, Willie B. Uh, thank you for being here today. This is a big deal. I'm going to pause for just a second. We're going to take stock of what's going on. What are we doing in a hangar on the flight line at Whiteman Air Force Base, staring at a guy from Louisiana who's going to yap at you for a few minutes and talk about the significance of not only this ceremony, but what this organization does at Whiteman Air Force Base. So if you don't mind, you can uh, just kind of look behind you real quick. Look at the formation assembled behind you. And if you look through them and you see the weapon systems sitting on this ram, you might see a old B-25 over there, T-38, A-10, and the hangars behind there, you'll see uh, B-2s. That's kind of symbolic. 2017 is a symbolic year. And there's probably no greater place to have that discussion than at Whiteman Air Force Base, where we're celebrating the 70th anniversary of our Air Force, the 75th anniversary of the Mighty Eighth. Apparently, I'm not close enough to the mic. <laughs> and the 100th anniversary of 10 bomb squadrons in the Mighty Eight. That's a pretty big deal. We're talking about the orderly and disciplined transfer of authority between Major General Select Tibbetts and General Select Nichols. Arrayed before the men and women that they had the privilege of leading. And it's symbolic that we transcend through our airmen, surrounded by our families, and looking at the weapon systems that hold at risk anybody on the planet that wants to threaten the United States of America. And I'd offer to you, there's probably no better place to do that than Whiteman Air Force Base. For the reason we exist is right behind you. The reason we have a ceremony for change of command, for wing command, is so that we have a public affirmation of the purpose of this position. It's not about General Tibbetts. It's not about General Nichols. It's about the airmen and the families arrayed in this room. It's about the mission they've been chartered to do to defend this nation, the honor of leadership and command. And that's what we're here for. And it only makes it more special because of Team Whiteman and the special community partners at Whiteman. Whether it's the 442nd or the 131st, or our tenant squadrons, or our civic leaders and community partners, that are here to support this mission, our airmen, and our families. And it's also significant that we have our families here today because we all know two things. We recruit airmen, we retain families. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that these fine Americans on this stage would not be here today without the love and support of their families. So Angel, Avery, and Paul, I know the last couple years have been tough. I've been there, done that. And I know the sacrifices that you have made personally and professionally to enable General Tibbetts to do his job is not lost on me. It's not lost on our Air Force, and it's something we can't capture or truly appreciate, but we know it makes a difference, so thank you. Michelle, Brooke, Bo, and Mike, you've been through the wing command tour before. This will be a little bit different in the sense that the mission's different, the base is different, but the dedication and support that Boris will need from you is no different. And again, we all know that the strength of a command team 
rests not only in the office, not only on the flight line, not in the airplane, but at home also. So, Angel, thank you for what you did. Michelle, thank you for what you're about to do. I know it's gonna make a difference, not only in Boris's leadership tour, but it'll make a difference in the lives of our airmen and their families, and that can be, cannot be overstated, so thank you. Mom and Dad, you should be proud. I'm sure you are. Probably not the first time you've been sitting in the audience looking up on the stage going, how did that happen? <laughs> it's all for good reason. Nothing's by mistake in our great Air Force. Thank you for being here, brothers and sisters, cousins. Thank you for being here to honor this celebration of the change of command. So let's just talk for a few minutes about what we're doing. Why is this change of command any different than any other, and why is this mission important to our nation? The mission of the 509th Bomb Wing that is integrally woven into the 131st Bomb Wing at Whiteman Air Force Base is our nation's number one mission. Don't confuse that. Every day, this installation transmits a message. Whether it's idling on the ramp or flying Pacific missions to Guam, doing deployments to Guam, or generating aircraft for U.S. Strategic Command, or within 36 hours notice, generating combat air power to go destroy the enemies of America. Every day, that's what this wing does. That's what the airmen behind you do. That's what the families around you support. And that's what the privilege of these two fine officers on this stage have had to do in the last two years and the two years ahead of us. Make no mistake about it. This wing is our nation's 911 force. It's our nation's only penetrating stealth platform that can hold at risk anything on the planet at a time and place of our choosing. We consider that a great negotiation tool. And my criteria for success of command is pretty simple. I've had the privilege of serving with General Tibbetts over many assignments. So what I'm gonna say is gonna be no surprise to him and I'm sure it'll be no surprise to General Nichols. The measure of success in command is one, the camper mentality. Leave it better than you found it. And two, when the phone rings at two o'clock in the morning, your team is ready. Because bad guys don't give us the opportunity to get ready. That's what we get paid for. That's why the weapon systems are arrayed behind you. That's why you have the steely-eyed warriors in formation, is to do our nation's business. And the absolute worst thing that can happen is when I call and we're not ready. The nation demands that. So I can tell you, over the last two years, whether it was an exercise for STRATCOM, a deployment to the Pacific, or combat operations in CENTCOM's AOR, the 509th and the 131st were ready. And I don't often cry but there was a tear running down my cheek. When the president approved and directed combat operations this year, it was executed flawlessly. And that doesn't happen by mistake. That happens because we have professional airmen in every group, in every AFSC, that understand the importance of their mission and why it needs to be done. It's because we have great leadership that enables that performance at every level, squadron, group, and wing. And we have the support of our community partners and state leadership to make it happen. It doesn't happen by chance. It's not a mistake. It's an intentional design to deliver air power anywhere on the planet for our nation. General Tibbetts, you can leave command today fully knowing 
that you left this organization better than you found it. You can leave this organization knowing that when I call, you are ready. Your team executed perfect. And that is something you need to be and your team needs to be very proud of. Congratulations on a successful command tour, and I'll see you in a few weeks. He's going to live across the park from my house down at Parksdale Air Force Base. General Nichols, congratulations. Again, it's not by mistake that organizations do well when tasked. It's by no mistake that General Select Nichols is on this stage. Every day and every month of every year of his Air Force career has prepared him for the duty he is about ready to assume. He has done it all. He's been an intel officer. He's been a planner. He's been a staff officer. He's been a commander at every level. This is not his first wing. If you looked at his bio and you look at his resume, not only does he have the requisite combat staff experience, schooling and education, professional development, he's been tested in combat himself. We have a little saying in command, you never ask anybody to do something that you have the privilege of leading that you wouldn't do yourself. General Nichols has done it all. He will serve Admiral B and with distinction with an organization that is like no other. And that's pretty cool. In a year that we celebrate so many anniversaries and recognize the significance of air power, to take command of the foundational organization that ended World War II is pretty cool. If you're a history buff and you read through the history of the 509th, you'll understand the airmen that are arrayed behind you are just like the airmen that flew in World War II. The same passion, the same professionalism, and the same service to this nation. But now we're 75 years later on a ramp in Missouri with more lethal air power and better trained and equipped airmen to do our nation's call. So Boris, my charter to you is very simple. You could probably guess what it is. Take command, leave this organization better than you found it, and for the love of God, when I call at two in the morning, please be ready. Thank you for being here today, America. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the Legion of Merit. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Legion of Merit, First Oak Leaf Cluster, to Brigadier General Paul W. Tibbetts IV. Paul W. Tibbetts IV distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 509th Bomb Wing, Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri, from 5 June 2015 to 16 June 2017. During this period, the exemplary ability, diligence, and devotion of General Tibbetts ensured over 14,000 military and civilian personnel were equipped to provide strategic deterrence, global power, and combat support worldwide as the nation's only active duty B-2 wing. His nuclear expertise was vital to the 509th Bomb Wing's success during two Global Thunder exercises as well as Hectic Roller 2016, the wing's first no-notice nuclear exercise in 22 years. The Hectic Roller 2017 and Hectic Roller 2017, where full aircraft generation was completed 27 hours ahead of Strategic Command's established timeline. His leadership was instrumental on four bomber assurance and deterrence deployments and a short notice activation to Anderson Air Force Base Guam, where America's global strike capabilities amassed during the Air Force's first tri-bomber operation, showcasing a constant allied presence in the Pacific region. 
assuring our allies and providing continued deterrence of our most hardened enemies. Under General Tibbetts' guidance, two B-2 aircraft conducted a 34-hour combat mission in support of, Odyssey, of Operation Odyssey Lightning, releasing 21 tons of munitions and resulting in the destruction of two terrorist training camps in Libya and the elimination of 78 enemy combatants. Additionally, he hosted the Department of Defense's annual Nuclear Weapon Accident and Incident Exercise where 1,200 federal, state, and local government personnel replicated the response of 16 interagency entities to a nuclear in incident through a week-long exercise. Furthermore, General Tibbetts secured a national math and science initiative grant and brought a national robotics program to the Nob Nostra School District, preparing and equipping local students for professions in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics career fields. Finally, General Tibbetts' devotion to upholding the legacy of excellence led to the Wings win of the coveted 2015 Fairchild Trophy, garnering accolades as the Air Force's best bomb wing, the superior initiative, outstanding leadership, and personal endeavor displayed by General Tibbetts reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force.